Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is one of those videos that I should probably start with a video clip showing us what we're going to be discussing. And it's right there. That unusual triangular slash square-like shape moving around along with several other organisms. And in essence, what you're actually looking at is, to some extent, a tiny microscopic chariot. Yeah, like those chariots we use with horses. Except that in this case, we're not using horses, we're using microorganisms. And so today's topic is going to be maybe a little bit more unusual, but it's actually technically based on some of the initial propositions by the iconic Richard Feynman from back in 1959. And so let's, I guess, start there. In 1959, Richard Feynman, the brilliant physicist that passed away in 1988, held a lecture at Caltech with the title There is plenty of room at the bottom, an invitation to enter a new field of physics. With all this eventually published in the book you see right here, that essentially focused on what you see right here, miniaturization. The eventual ability of humanity to manipulate matter on atomic scales and to eventually create some kind of tiny nanoscale machines that he basically compared to swallowing a doctor. So basically, a tiny molecular robot serving as a kind of a microsurgeon that can fix our bodies from within. And though back in 1959 this was essentially science fiction, today in 2024 we're technically slowly making it science reality. And that's because in the last decade or so there's been a lot of progress in trying to create these artificial micro swimmers. Basically tiny robots that have a huge potential in biomedical application and can easily perform a lot of complex tasks but do so from within the body. But what Feynman did not realize, and what we actually realized in the last few decades, is that there are a lot of challenges we could not imagine. And interestingly, the biggest challenge so far is in regards to locomotion. And that's because once you get to these micro scales, a lot of liquids, such as for example water, become extremely viscous. It's measured in what's known as the Reynolds number. It's essentially a kind of a quantity that predicts various fluid flows in different situations. And so when this number is very low, the liquid tends to flow extremely slowly, whereas with the high Reynolds number, the flow tends to be very turbulent and very fast. And though for a typical person swimming in the water, this number is usually approximately 4 million, for a typical microorganism, it's usually much less than 1, usually 1 1 millionth or just a little bit higher. And so in order for anything small to swim in these conditions, the evolution had to evolve a lot of different techniques. For example, many different bacteria and quite a lot of different organisms use things like cilia and flagella. And these are basically hair-like protrusions that create locomotion by deforming waves along flagella or cilia and by essentially acting either like tiny arms or tiny propellers. And interestingly, the machinery inside of them is super complex as well. But basically by producing these rotational or beating motions, it allows the majority of microorganisms to propel themselves relatively fast. As a matter of fact, just as a side note, a few weeks ago I took my 5 year old to collect some pond water so we can actually examine it under a microscope. And to our surprise, we discovered something that was moving super super fast inside the water, so fast as a matter of fact, that we didn't even have enough time to snap a picture. And well, surprisingly, it was actually the organism that we're going to be discussing today. It's a very well known algae known as Chlamydomonas reinhardii that seems to exist pretty much everywhere. In terms of structure and the appearance, it basically looks like this. And so in this recent study, the Japanese scientists discovered a very clever technique. They essentially created a micro swimmer by using the propulsion from these super fast moving algae. And what you're looking at right here is the result. But they did this by basically creating microscopic traps, or I guess a kind of a harness that can then be attached to a mobile robot in order to create propulsion by using a completely different organism. And surprisingly, it worked really well. Here, in every single case, they were able to create these moving chariots by trapping the algae inside of this tiny harness. And in terms of size, this is actually really small, roughly around 10 micrometers in size, attached to a tiny harness that was formed using micro 3D printing techniques, whose main purpose, at least for now, was to basically find out if it even works. First of all, can these harnesses trap the algae? And second of all, does the algae have enough power to then push everything around? And here they decided to conduct several experiments. In one of these 3D printed vehicles that are approximately one half of human hair in thickness, this particular structure was spinning at a speed of 40 micrometers a second and was producing consistent locomotion. 
In the second device, they refer to as the scooter, they were also moving around, but in very unusual, unpredictable ways, rotating and turning around, and even doing backflips as the structure was moving everywhere. And all of this was possible because these particular algae can actually move really, really fast, with these baskets allowing them to use their flagella by essentially having them stick out in front in the way you see right here. But unlike previous nano machines, here this was all powered naturally. In a lot of previous examples, something had to power these machines, such as for example different types of light, but here the locomotion was natural and produced by the algae itself. And more importantly, this particular algae is technically safe to consume and can even produce its own energy and its own food by either using light or by even growing in darkness as long as they have enough sugars. And so these are actually really interesting organisms that in theory could survive inside dark environments and are very unlikely to be dangerous if put inside some kind of a tissue. Now obviously nobody's going to be injecting these yet, at this point this is still very preliminary research, but the results from this experiment are super exciting. Obviously they'll teach us more about locomotion of microorganisms, but it's really the potential to evolve this into some kind of a incredible medical technology that makes the study super exciting. And even if not for medical reasons, this could possibly be even used for, for example, environmental cleaning and to get rid of various pollutants in aquatic environments. So basically here imagine a tiny chariot that uses a nano machine to, for example, break down plastics or remove certain pollutants that's entirely driven by various types of algae that live and thrive in these environments already. And this algae is actually incredible for so many reasons. For example, it also has an eye spot and so technically it's possible to guide this algae by using certain frequencies of light. And so there's even a potential to control the motion of all of this and guide these chariots to a very specific destination. And so yeah, something to look forward to and something we'll discuss in some of the future videos once there are some updates or the scientists behind this study create something else super amazing. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.